Today on Earth Focus, fracking goes global. Hydraulic fracturing, a process to extract natural gas from underground rock, is raising concerns worldwide. Original reports from Poland, the United Kingdom, and South Africa explain why. Coming up on Earth Focus. The Karoo Desert stretches out across a third of South Africa's land area. Dolerite mountains like these separate the land into different habitats, harboring the richest diversity of any desert in the world. Here are world-class astronomy projects and a farming industry that exports food around the world, producing 3.4 million sheep a year. Seven million people rely on this desert for their daily existence. Most of the Karoo is extremely dry, with about 7 to 10 inches of rain per year. Despite a short-lived summer rainstorm like this one, all the water in the Karoo comes from wells drilled into the ground and pumped up to the surface using age-old windmills harking back to an older, slower time. Farmers, scientists, and communities are worried that without access to clean water like this from wells, this vast area will be economically devastated. The Karoo is the name of this desert, but it is also the name of a shale deposit called the Karoo Basin. This basin stretches almost across the whole country of South Africa. Looked on as a curse for some and a blessing for others, locked into the Karoo Basin may be as much as 400 trillion cubic feet of shale gas, the fifth largest deposit of its kind in the whole world. Since the moratorium on natural gas exploration was lifted in 2012, companies like Royal Dutch Shell and others are lining up at South Africa's door, waiting for the green light to explore for what the government hopes will be a clean and abundant source of energy that brings jobs and development. The biggest issue that we have, or one of the, the issues that we have with the long-term cost of fracking is that the government and the oil and gas industry are very keen to promote it on the basis that it brings prosperity. And I question what is this thing, prosperity, that they're talking about? Because if they're talking about short-term gains for a few global companies and a government that happens to be ruling at the moment, and that is what they call prosperity, and that prosperity is at the cost of the prosperity of future generations then it's not worth it. Deal and his group are part of a growing resistance to natural gas production here that is prepared to do whatever it takes to prevent exploration and extraction of the Karoo gas deposit. The problem of, of exploring is, is simply that there's never been a precedent of the Department of Minerals ever stopping the conversion of an exploration license into full-scale production. Natural gas production in shale formations consists of essentially three stages. Drilling is done with huge rigs. The rig drills many wells from one pad using directional drilling techniques to fan out the wells like an octopus from the drill pad as much as 10 kilometers away in any direction. Once the drilling is complete, the rig is taken away and service trucks bring millions of liters of water and chemicals to the site where they are mixed and injected under great pressure in a process called hydraulic fracturing or fracking. At roughly 4,000 feet deep, the pipes have holes where the extreme pressure drives the fluid into the shale and cracks it, releasing the methane gas and other chemicals. Once the wells from the pad have been fracked, some 20 to 80 percent of the millions of liters of polluted water mixed with fracking fluids return up the well shaft to the surface, where the toxic liquid must be disposed of often in settling ponds next to the drill pad like this, where the liquids and volatile compounds can evaporate into the air. For the 8 to 30 year life of the well, trucks must take away the polluted waste mixture that emerges with the gas. This waste can be 50% of everything coming up the well, mostly volatile organic compounds. Potential problems with this process are not just relegated to the fracking of the well, as many believe, but every aspect of production. The most clear danger is when fracking fluids and trapped gas leak out the sides of the well shaft into the water table through cracked well casings. Also, the chemicals are mixed on the surface and stored in large ponds that must be very carefully insulated from leakage, which is sometimes not done. 
Once the well is drilled, fracked, and in production, it can still be invisibly polluting. As much as 9% of the methane and compounds like benzene, toluene, ethylbenzene, and xylenes may leak out of the well. Most shale basins are even, flat, and maintain a fairly regular deep layer continuity with few hard rock intrusions that allow water to move upward. The Karoo is different. Dr. Gerrit von Tonder from the University of the Free State supported natural gas extraction until he embarked on a study of the geology of this desert. He fears that vertical pathways made by lava flows called dolerite dikes, shown here in black, will allow fracking fluids and other waste to rise and pollute the water table. Dolerite, it was a warm, warm lava that infiltrates the cold sedimentary rock. And of course, when you get cooler, you will get the cracks along the dolerite. And it's full of cracks, it's full of preference of pathways. So our problem is at least 10 times, 100 times bigger uh, in shales like the United States where you don't find dolerites or test lava intrusions. The water deep in the Karoo is under such high pressure that it is always looking for these preferred flow paths. And Von Tonder believes that eventually the water will even find its way up the gas wells after they are closed with cement. They say they close the ball with the good cement, but all the cement will crack, will deteriorate with time. What will happen after 50 to 100 years after abandonment of a well? All the wells will leak. This is a given. The latest science from the gas fields of America seems to support his conclusions. According to this University of Colorado study and another from Cornell University, wells are leaking gas and other chemicals into the air at a rate about three times what the industry concedes. The government suggests that hundreds of thousands of jobs will be created, helping offset the 24% unemployment in the country. Small-scale farmers like Raymond Klassen believe that this is short-sighted. It is thinking like this that scientists have been trying to instill in government and public health organizations with oversight over drilling activities. So what is in the fracking mixture? No one knows for sure, and most companies aren't telling. Dr. Theo Colburn's group, the Endocrine Disruption Exchange, has worked to uncover a list of 246 products used by the natural gas industry. One of our staff set out to systematically set up a database in order to look at the long list of chemicals that we had at hand. Of those products that had health effects, 14% had one to three effects, and 86% had four to 14 effects. And what surprised us was to find that 43% of the products on our list contain endocrine disruptors chemicals that can interfere with the development of individuals before they are born and cause irreversible lifetime changes in their health later in life. People in the Karoo, like Berrydale community leader Henry Michaels, are not willing to trade their long-term future for short-term gain. No, 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 it's, it's like a scheme, you see. It will impact our environment and also it will impact our underground water resources. So, that can be a lot of for the land and pump. It can be a lot of money But what from the future? What can from our land be? What can from our world be? As our whole world. So, I read that 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 can our Earth freeze snow here. Northern Poland. This is a picturesque land of farms, rolling hills, and pristine forests. The people are fiercely independent and proud of their unique home, but some are worried. Poland has found itself caught up in the global hunt for natural resources. 
The region around the city of Gdansk is rich in underground gas and energy companies want to drill for it. But to do so, they have to utilise a controversial method known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. In the US, fracking has been linked to a host of social and environmental problems. These rural Polish communities have heard the horror stories and don't want it in their backyard. But the fracking industry disputes such concerns. We've allowed folks to go and speak for us. Others like Josh Fox and Gasland, environmentalists, folks who have an agenda. And that agenda sometimes is based on misinformation. Fracking is spreading globally from the US into Europe, the former USSR and well beyond. Some countries, France included, have imposed a moratorium. Others, including Poland, have embraced it, with over 100 concessions recently awarded. Edward Sawicki is an organic farmer in this tiny Kashubian village. His farm sits on a gas hotspot. Zaczęło się od tego, że firmy, które poszukują, firmy, które poszukują, robią badania sejsmiczne dla firm wydobywczych, zaczęły nas nachodzić w ubiegłym roku i no, to nie było nawet nachodzenie, to było nękanie nas i terroryzowanie, zagrażanie nam, że nas wywłaszczą karami pieniężnymi, różne rzeczy próbowali. He is worried about the impact on water sources in the region particularly if chemicals used in fracking processes leak. He believes other forms of pollution may follow. Jak będzie oczyszczane i w atmosferę pójdzie, czyli w powietrze, tym, co będziemy oddychać, ten gaz, to znaczy jak będzie oczyszczany ten gaz, te pozostałości z tego wydobycia, nie? żeby ten gaz, gaz oczyścić, żeby stał się, jak rząd mówi, ekologiczny, to wtedy on będzie, ale ten cały syf zostanie tutaj na miejscu, u nas. Some here do accept that Poland's gas reserves are economically important, but are opposed to the fracking process itself. W związku z tym, no chciałabym, żeby żeby pomyślano o tym, że, że w jakiś inny sposób, żeby to wydobywać. E, w, owszem, ten gaz jest potrzebny, ale czy kosztem akurat natury i ludzi, którzy tutaj żyją, bo Na pewno stracą także ludzie, którzy zainwestowali w przemysł turystyczny, a także potencjalne, już nawet mówiąc tylko potencjalne zagrożenie wyciekami czy skażeniem środowiska spowoduje to, że płody rolne nie będą kupowane przez odbiorców. In this village, in the grip of the Polish winter, farmers are also concerned. Gospodarujemy tu już jako czwarte pokolenie na, ty, na tym gospodarstwie i tu ziemia przechodzi z e, ojca na syna i, i, i jest dziedziczona i tu jest bardzo wielki głód ziemi i my się bardzo tu martwimy o tą ziemię, a wiadomo, że bez wody żyć się nie da, woda potrzebna jest nie tylko roślinom, ale też nam, ludziom do życia i zwierzętom do hodowli. They maintain they were given very little information by either the gas company or the authorities before gas drilling began. No, ja, ja tak też do końca nie znam się na tym informacji jest bardzo mało, ale jak się wczytuje, to jednak oni przechodzą przez warstwy tutaj wód na różnych głębokościach i może być ta woda albo skażona. Residents here say the gas industry has presented a misleading image of fracking. Firmy na zebraniach sołeckich powiedziały, że jest otwór, który posiada trzy rury zabetonowane cementem i nie ma możliwości przedostawania się gazu czy opłuczyny do wód gruntowych. My skąd inąd wiemy z internetu i z rozmów z mieszkańcami Pensylwanii czy Kanady, że płuczka, która wydostaje się po szczelinowaniu, przenika do wód gruntowych i zatruwa wody. The filmmaker behind Gasland, Josh Fox, recently pledged solidarity with Polish activists. Uh, there's no evidence right now that shale gas can be developed sustainably. There's no evidence that we can withstand what this would mean for our climate. There is currently absolutely no way 
to extract shell gas without using hydraulic fracture stimulation or fracking. He rejects the claim that communities have been left in the dark or misinformed. I've been to Poland. I've attended in meetings in villages where oil and gas companies, including Chevron, have sat with people and explained to them what is happening, what the process is, and how it's going to impact the community. So I don't believe that every single person has been left in the dark. He also rejects that fracking will lead to contamination of water. Now, I don't believe that we are contaminating drinking water. I don't believe that what we're doing is harmful to the environment, or I would not be doing it. But critics highlight concerns over drinking supplies. They say the fracking industry has embarked on a glossy PR exercise to win over hearts and minds. Local people say the fracking industry has even used the church's influence to persuade people that fracking is safe and that it will benefit the community. Ksiądz proboszcz, który poświęcił to przedsięwzięcie i byłem bardzo zdziwiony, że ksiądz też jest bardzo za za taką inwestycją, która która gro, grozi tutaj bytu nam mieszkańcom jego parafianom. We track down the priest alleged to have been involved. Ja pan staram się jak najmniej kontaktu. Święciłem tutaj tą, tą wieżę, jak oni to robili, bo tam poprosili mnie, no, na mieszkańcy odprawiłem sześć kontaktów. Tak, to są rzeczy myślę, że miłe tej firmy, która to robiła, ale to bez jakichś takich wzajemnych zobowiązań. Mhm. Tak. To nie było jakichś datku na kości? E, nie, 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 nie. No i tam przekazali, nie, tylko, no i tylko przekazali taką kwotę, tam 5 tysięcy na dzieci, wyjeżdżały na kolonie i po prostu ja tam wykorzystałem. The potential is bright. I think it's going to take some time. It won't happen overnight. But I think Poland is off to a great start, though their early success um, may be questionable. But you would expect to see that in a frontier play where you don't have any experience, no knowledge, and you're trying to chart a pathway forward. Cały czas podaje nam się przykład Stanów Zjednoczonych, gdzie gaz łupkowy jest takim sukcesem. Jednak jest dużo różnic. Whatever the coming months and years hold, those advocating fracking have their work cut out. When you're driving down Peel Road, you can smell gas. It's horrible. The earthquakes that caused. It's all about money. They've taken oil from the North Sea and the North Sea's not disappeared. So we'll have to see what happens. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking as it is known, involves pumping a mixture of water, sand and chemicals into the ground in order to extract natural gas. In the UK, the government recently lifted a moratorium on the process, paving the way, say campaigners, for an unprecedented dash for gas. The government's plans on fracking are indeed hugely controversial, and in, for very good reason too. The Committee on Climate Change, for example, has said that not only will a dash for gas completely bust our climate targets in terms of getting our emissions down, but is also likely to lead to higher fuel bills as well. Opponents say fracking is just one part of a much wider trend of extreme energy extraction. A significant number of licenses have already been sold across the country um, and we expect more to be sold soon in the 14th round. Um, as much as three-fifths of the country is up for grabs um, and people are right to be concerned about this because the government are trying to change the system so that uh, local planning is bypassed so that people so that large large investors can go directly to the government to get approval for this kind of stuff. In the UK we're seeing the start of shale exploration. Um, we're actually seeing production licenses applied for for COVID methane um, and we're seeing um, areas of the coastline around our coastline sold off for potential underground coal gasification. So three unconventional gas technologies which could come to the come to the country but some have already arrived. You can't look at 
shale gas or fracking as a single thing. And what we're looking at is extreme energy. And extreme energy isn't just about the technologies. You know, extreme energy requires extreme finance. It requires extreme economics. It's extreme governance. Because to force these measures through, they are engineering a system to allow the large-scale despoliation of the countryside. But advocates say the issue has become sensationalised. And the image of lighting your water faucet on fire has become the, the, uh, the, vi the, the viewpoint or the, the image of fracking around the world. Now, the reality is the media uh, loves sensationalism, and that has now uh, transcended the entire scientific evidence that says that fracking is safe. Fearing the worst, communities up and down the country have begun to mobilise. This is a letter to David Cameron, signed by signatories from Sussex, Falkirk, Belfast, Lancashire, Fylde and Ribble Estuary and the Vale of the Morgan, calling for an immediate ban on shale gas and coal bed methane exploitation in the UK. And we are delivering it in solidarity from all regions to number 10 in about half an hour. I think communities are, are quite right to be very worried about the impact of drilling and, and fracking around their local communities. We know from what's happened in, in other places that there are real risks of, of water pollution, for example. And let's not forget that there is, what we're talking about here is potentially a huge number of, of wells. I mean, under some estimates, we're talking about up to 2,400 wells being drilled across the UK, sometimes in incredibly sensitive areas. In Falkirk, Scotland, these local residents are using both traditional and new campaigning methods to fight a coal bed methane, CBM, development. Our main concerns are with you know, water pollution, air pollution, and also quite seriously, uh, fugitive methane emissions from the plants, which could seriously jeopardise our climate change targets. This organic farmer is concerned, despite living a considerable distance from the proposed okay, okay. development. So it's all part of one big landscape system, with the Trossachs Mountains to the, to the north and the Loch Lomond and Trossachs National Park to the west. So it's difficult to, to separate out what's going on in Falkirk to its wider landscape um, context. In Lancashire, the potential impact of fracking on the region's farmland has also worried communities living near to gas drilling operations. My biggest fear is this area is um, a green area and there's a lot of salad crops grown here and it's a very important area for salad crops in this country. And we distribute our crops to all over the UK. This kind of um, industry here in Lancashire, with the amount of wells that they need, to make it economically viable will completely destroy that. This isn't going to bring jobs or security, fuel security for, for the farm area. There are huge unknowns about health risks, risks to the, the water, the aquifers. Um, this isn't a stable area, you know, it's liable to subsidence at the best of times and, and, and there are all sorts of risks associated and it's just a retrograde step and we need to be investing in renewables for the long term future. This is very, very short term and potentially disastrous. Opposition to fracking in Lancashire grew dramatically following an earthquake linked to exploratory gas drilling. It's going to devastate the whole country. I cannot walk away from this. People need to know about it. Once they know the facts, they will say, stop fracking. This led directly to the temporary nationwide moratorium. Although this has now been lifted, some communities remain in limbo. Yeah, that's it. We go ahead. We weren't surprised. In Sussex, it is unclear whether fracking near Balkan will go ahead. Fracking is a process I wouldn't wish on anyone anywhere. I think it's a poisonous, potentially very dangerous process. Here in Sussex, in Balkham, we live in a beautiful part of the world. It is classified as an area of outstanding natural beauty. There are people who have livestock, there are farms, we have, a, we have beautiful streams running through. Um, it, it's a lovely place to live. Fracking and the industrialization of the landscape could ruin that. Forcing high volumes of water 
and carcinogenic chemicals into the ground at a kind of pressure that would fracture a million year old rock relying on your own cement casings that is going to leak it's going to go through it's going to get into the groundwater it's going to get into the aquifer it's going to get into the reservoirs the gas is going to leak into the atmosphere water water meets water water goes from everywhere to everywhere you can't separate it you can't legislate for the vagaries of subterranean geology fracking chiefs say much of the opposition is based on misinformation it's not fracking is unsafe not the procedure is unsafe but if someone makes a mistake then anything can happen and i think that people are foolish to think that there's some form of energy and that includes wind or solar or any other type of energy nuclear we saw what happened in japan that comes without any kind of risk that pops out of the ground powers the plug in your wall and produces energy that has no consequence or risk and that's just not possible they're trying to convince us that they're going to do it safely safe fracking is the oxymoron of the decade 